Hey everybody, good morning. How's it going today? Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Today we're going to talk about which stocks we're looking to buy today, whether or not the stock market is going to rally today or if it's going to continue, as John A. said, actually pretty good comment here by John, that um, we are heading down and looking for longer term support today. We're going to talk about that today. But I'm actually going to shift it around a little bit today. Um, I'm going to tell you why I am expecting why I want the market to go down on the open today. It's a very advanced strategy that I'm going to talk about in this book. We also have another book that I'm going to talk about today. We've got a ton of stuff to get through today. So uh, if you could do me a quick favor, just confirm that the audio visual is good. We'll kick it off and uh, we'll get started with a lot of good stuff today. Uh, let's see. Richard Gresham, good morning. John Oaks, how are you today? Hey, Minvai, how are you? Ross, I got your email. Ross Marshall. Uh, yeah, we're actually looking forward to uh, we, the live stream that we did yesterday. It was the first time we actually had a guest on, and uh, it was pretty good. It was actually fun where we kind of went back and forth. 30 minutes went pretty quick. Uh, okay, audio visuals good. Thank you, LJ. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Actually, I think that's the first time I've seen you with us today. Thanks so much for being here, LJ. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, let me just pop this up here, and we'll get started right on the button. Okay, so obviously everything that we speak about here is for educational purposes. My biggest mission is to help you make better decisions so that you become the asset. One of the biggest things I could ask you for is if we provide value for you today, please click down and subscribe and smash that like button. It would mean the world to me, as well as let me know what kind of content uh, that you like, actually. What I'm producing um, benefits you. That's really my biggest mission here, okay? So we're going to get right into it now. There's a lot to talk about today. And we're actually going to share some stuff from I <laughs> slide over on the other side. We're going to talk about which stocks to buy. And one of the members of our community yesterday, Dalip, actually came up with something uh, super interesting, um, running statistics. And it's something that um, he likes to do all the time. He's kind of always running um, different bubbles and heat maps and correlations of stuff and uh, which stocks are going up, which stocks are going down, how that equates to whether or not today is a good day to be a buyer or a seller. So today we're going to dive into something that Delete put up on the screen, uh, actually in our community yesterday. And uh, I think he's been spot uh, spot on on a few of these. Hey, Will, how's it going? All right. Haven't seen you in a while. How's it going? Um, so I'm going to bring it up on the screen and we're going to talk about it. OK, I'm going to let me actually just pop this up here first. Uh, we're first going to take a look at the chart that he talked about, which was this one. So this is the one day relative performance of all of the major ETFs yesterday. OK, so you can see everything here on the screen was negative and, you know, just kind of off the top of your head. You're like, oh, my gosh, all the stocks are going down. <laughs> Stock market's about to crash. Um, but again, we mentioned it a little bit yesterday that there is a statistic out there that Larry Connors did, who's a very famous uh, hedge fund manager, especially a little more popular online in the early 2000s. Um, and this is pretty interesting. He he did a statistic, I think over 20 years, he ran back testing. And basically, he compared five day highs versus five day lows. And essentially, what he came up with was the fact that buying five day highs was less profitable than buying five day lows over the following five days. So it's like five, 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 like all those numbers match up in there. So if you can think about it, if you find stocks that have bullish order flow and those stocks pull back a little bit and they make a new five day low. And obviously we're talking about here on Delete stuff that um, it's actually a one day low. But I will tell you, and it's def I'm going to keep teasing this book. I'm going to talk about it in a second. It's a big part of the book um, that I, if you look at most of your swing trades, buying breakouts versus buying pullbacks, they both work and they both have their place. Um, but you'd be surprised how buying strong stocks when they make new five day lows actually produce more reliable winners. Now, again, everything here is for educational purposes, back testing yourself. I'm telling you from my own trading. But this is what I want to pull up. And um, I think it's a fascinating statistic that I want to share with everybody. So let me let me just pull this up here. And I'll make this a little bit bigger. And again, this is the kind of um, these are the kind of collaborations that we have in our community every day. And this is really what spurs uh, really thinking deeper. So if you think about all of the sectors closing red yesterday, and then Delete put this in there yesterday, uh, you can see the chart that we just posted. Um, so he uses Finviz, which is something that we talk about pretty much every day. And this is the kind of stuff that 
um, goes on behind the scenes, keeping these stats since May. One day relative performance is showing all sectors red. So Tuesday, all the sectors are red. This is the fifth time I've observed this bearish during the time. And in the previous four cases, and it gives the exact dates. So if you want to snapshot that, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, the next day has resulted in all sectors being green. This is the stuff that you could really geek out on as a trader where, look, we all know trading happens because of probabilities, which means sample size over time. Uh, when you run these kind of things, it's super exciting to actually get to the point where you start to trade them based on what's happening. So today you'll actually see that um, we talk, we're going to talk about position sizing in a second, uh, where I break this setup down even more. Uh, and let me make sure that I have the chart uh, up. I'll, I'll pull it up in a second. I'll pull the chart up in a second. So this is one of those things that is super, like, I'm, I'm sure like we're all here at 730 in the morning. We're like super trading geeks, right? So that's one thing we're going to talk about today. We're also going to dive into, I'm going to talk about this book. Um, I think I've mentioned this book before. Uh, it's going to be the topic of what we're going to talk about right now and why I am actually hoping after the last four days of selling, why I'm actually hoping that the market opens flat, which is kind of like right there right now, and then pushes lower on the open and just takes out the previous day's low by just a little bit. And I'm going to show you why in a second. Uh, one thing I want to bring up, if you don't mind, we're going to head on over to the charts. I just want to remind everybody, now I know there's a lot of members of our community who are uh, observing Yom Kippur today, so you might not be able to attend uh, the webinar that we're having tonight. But if you can't, you can always register and, and you'll get the replay um, when you're available. Um, so if you can uh, take a look at the webinar that we're having tonight, it's it's a it's a it's shaping up to be a really exciting futures trading webinar. Um, so if you want to attend the event tonight, if futures trading is a little bit different from stock trading, obviously a little something different than what we do. The two hosts that we have tonight, um, they're really, really good. Uh, Jeffrey Manson and Caitlin Okram. Uh, are on top of their game. If you happen to catch the live stream that we did yesterday, it was actually pretty exciting. Um, Caitlin broke down some stuff where what they do is kind of future looking, which is interesting because most people read the charts, look to the left, but what they do is they kind of look to the right. But I think one of the most fascinating things they talk about, um, which she touched on just a little bit yesterday, is finding the unfilled institutional orders and obviously, we spend a lot of time talking about order flow and institutional orders. They kind of took a little bit of a different twist, the unfilled institutional orders and how that actually leads to big pocket, big quick pockets of opportunity because price goes down into those orders and then explodes because of that unmet uh, demand that finally gets filled. So if you have some time, click below the, the, the registration link is in the uh, description below the video. So um Register for tonight's webinar at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and again, if you can't make it, we'll make sure that you get the replay if you happen to be busy this evening. But obviously, if you attend live, you can ask a lot more um, questions. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to go back over into um, something else, which is uh, this email. Okay, so this email, uh, let me zoom it out a little bit. Uh, this, is, this is basically my breakdown of what I'm looking to see happen today. If you happen to see yesterday's live stream, we, we did a really deep dive into how I use the VIX and the ticks in the morning. Uh, yep, Catherine, I absolutely agree with you. Absolutely. Um, so this is the breakdown, but the, the more important part here, and we're going to get into the breakdown and what I'm looking for and why, uh, but this here, position sizing, all right? I'm going to leave this up here for a second just so you can take a look at it, but really it comes down to is this part here, which is working the share size. And we're actually going to get into a survey that we've done recently and some of the interesting feedback that we got. I'm going to, I'm going to use that feedback uh, as, as, as more uh, in different ways that I can help you because you're literally telling me what the struggles and challenges are that you have now. The point that I want to get across here right now is that there's a difference between learning how to read charts and learning how to be a trader. And you know that's something I talk about all the time because, look, I have all the books. I have <laughs> probably every book out there, right? Um, books are learning what to look at, actually trading and different environments. And again, I use I use driving a car, stop and go traffic, driving in the rain, driving in the snow, it's wide open road, that kind of stuff. 
learning how and when to step on the gas. We always can, we always put that in the context of when I was looking to buy stocks and this, you know, the stock market looks interesting. We're always talking about how long do I hold my winning trades? You know, where is the stop loss? How long is my hope by winning trades? But I don't think enough time is given to the context of what is the proper position sizing in those conditions. And that's actually what I talked about here. If you want to take a quick screenshot of this, I'd be okay with that. This was the email that went out to our community today. And we discuss first the expectation for the market opening. We discuss what we're looking for. And then we discuss how we plan to trade it. So if you want to take a quick screenshot of that, that's okay. But this is the difference. This is the difference between somebody who consistently sees their account grow um, month after month after month and, and this is probably one of the most important things, um, keeps themselves out of trouble because you recognized the different market conditions and you understood when to go in with heavier position sizing because the trade, the idea, the scenario is just amazing and the reward potential warranted getting in there with a little extra position size on your initial entry versus, which we talked about a couple of ideas yesterday, especially if you attended the live stream yesterday, where the market was getting hit, but then I segued over into a different way of scanning for stocks that had relative strength at the moment if, and I'm going to show you the screen again so you can snapshot it, if the market internals start pointing in a particular direction. So the market was going down. We started to notice stuff in the VIX, the ticks, and the sector ETFs intraday. We said, if this happens, then I plan to look at these stocks. But those stocks were already showing relative strength. So those were technically a better deal because they were showing strength when the market was weak. And I know that that's a whole bunch of stuff, right? But it's really not that complicated. I'm going to show you how to do it in a, in a broader sense. There's a lot more to it the way that we look at intraday, but I want to introduce you to that today. But again, I want to talk about position sizing. And this is one of the books that uh, I bought it. I want to say I bought this in 2000 when I first started trading. Uh, this is the name of the book. If you want to take a look, you can take a snapshot of that. The Trading Game, Playing by the Numbers to Make Millions, and uh, the author's name is Ryan Jones. Um, I will tell you that this book is a little bit, it's super interesting, a little bit complicated, um, but it really wakes you up to the fact that adjusting your position sizing, whether you adjust it based on the trade scenario and how good the idea is, whether you adjust it based on the total equity in your account, which I think is a smarter way to do it. He talks about fixed fractional trading, fixed ratio trading, a whole bunch of other stuff. It's a good book. I'm going to point you to it in the direction of another book that also gets into position sizing, but more in the context of expectation for follow through. So what are the odds of, of actually making money? All of that kind of stuff. Larry Williams, and I know we have a lot of experienced traders on here who probably know the name of Larry Williams. Um, he actually got to the point in one of his books called Long Term Long Term Secret to Short Term Trading, something, something along those lines. He actually called position sizing the keys to the kingdom. I could not possibly agree more. And I actually learned that from him years ago. I bought that book in 2002. Here's why I'm, I'm sticking with this topic. The market conditions, I think we can all agree. And I'm going to pull up the chart uh, of the SPY right now. Let me let me just jump into that and We'll pull up, I want to pull up the 15 minute chart of the SPY. We're going to take a look at it over the last uh, four days. So this is the this is what we're looking at here. This is over the last four days, right? Everybody's looking to find a spot to bid for stock. And we just kind of keep melting lower. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, where'd all the buyers go that were pushing the, market, the stock market up for the last uh, you know 18 months? Have they all just disappeared? Or everybody's like, oh my God, it's September. Everybody was talking about September is going to be the worst month of the year and blah, 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 right? All, all of that, right? All of that makes up the equation. But here's the thing. We all know that that big line is still pointing to the upside. We all know the bull market is still in favor, right? The bull market is still here. We haven't even come close to being a change of trend. It's still really just a pullback in a longer term uptrend. However, and again, we give you the real deal here. I'm trading, you're trading. We're actually all putting trades on. I put on a trade in JP Morgan yesterday that triggered right away in the morning, completely reversed. And I actually got out of the trade on the same day, which I very rarely do on swing trades. The bullish tactics are, are still valid. The bullish follow through has been a little bit less, a little bit less gusto. I think we can all agree with that, right? So let's let's just put like a wrap up, wrap this up in a bow. And it really comes down to this. We're taking good trades. 
We're seeing good ideas. We're putting on ideas that we absolutely love. Otherwise, we wouldn't put our hard-earned money in the way, right? But we're not getting follow through. So good ideas not following through to the upside doesn't make it a bad idea. It makes it a trade that just doesn't follow through. So what does that have to do with everything? What is, you know, we have this book here. What, what does that have to do with everything? It has to do with this, okay? It has to do with this and it has to do with your wallet, okay? In good market conditions, we're not really so much worried about the downside, even though obviously we're focused on it all the time because we're making money. We're making money. All the money we're making, we're getting follow through. We're making money, right? And things are good. We have another. We can have another discussion about that because in good conditions, you need to make more for the exact type of conditions that we're in now. If you want to elevate your game, if you want to do this for a living, let's just throw it out there. Let's just say you want to trade stocks for a living, whatever, whatever you happen to be trading. It is critical to understand position sizing when conditions are tougher and we're not seeing the market internals. We're not seeing sector rotation, which again, we'll, we'll pull up that right now too. We're not seeing very clean sector rotation. We're seeing the markets uh, kind of weak and all over the place, right? This is performance for the last week. This is performance for yesterday. If we are not seeing clarity in sector rotation, you can still trade, but it's critical that your position sizing, your initial position sizing, and again, if I go back to that, um, email that I sent out to everybody today. We're talking about initial position sizing, looking for feedback. Okay. This topic, this concept is what will make you, it will take you to the next level in such a quicker way. It, it'll be mind boggling to you. And here's why you opened your account. You're on this video with me right now, which by the way, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. You obviously want to see results here, right? That kind of goes without saying. But are you adjusting your position sizing to be commensurate with the type of trading that's going on in the market at that moment? Are you sizing up and holding longer when the market conditions are good, like we've had for the last 18 months? Are you reducing your initial position sizing right now and waiting for feedback from the market in the form of positive bullish price action before you eventually get to your full share size. Now, here's how this matters in such a big way. I've been very upfront with everybody. I thought August was a really tough month for swing trading. We, we had some breakouts, the pullback, the breakout, the pullback, and there were some losses during, during, uh, during the month of August. Small losses, annoying losses, but the key is they were small losses because position sizing wasn't big. So we talk about this a lot in our private community. We talk a lot about it in our boot camp is that if you keep your size to the level of what you're looking at, it's much easier in the long run to see your account go like this. But something that's not talked about often enough, and I, I honestly, I don't think at all, is that sometimes losing money is okay if you took all good ideas. Losing less money because the market conditions were tougher is even smarter. And that's really what I want to inspire you to do. Think about the market conditions and what kind of position sizing you should have relative to what's available at that moment. So right now, the conditions are a little bit tougher. So the proper way to trade is to reduce your initial position sizing, only looking to scale up when you get positive feedback. Better market conditions, and, and we could even talk about better market conditions. Maybe just the market or your stock right now is well bid over the last two days. So you have higher highs, higher lows, and closing near the highs. Even that could be considered better conditions. But if we're seeing the opposite of that, where we have well offered, maybe longer term push to the upside, but two well offered candlesticks where it's lower highs and lower lows and closing on the lows, even just that little subtle difference should dictate that you lower your initial position size with the intention of trading bigger. So how does that make you a better trader? Well, if you manage the downside in tougher conditions, it's kind of like using your brake the, when you're driving your car. You keep yourself safe until the road opens up and then you get to where you're going with conviction. That's the secret to trading. I know you throw the word secret out there and, and all that kind of stuff. I got to tell you, it changes everything because now when you, you have a small loss, a small win, a small loss, a small win, and maybe, maybe it's Thursday afternoon and maybe this is a little bit more geared towards day traders or whatnot, but maybe... It's Thursday afternoon and the whole week you're kind of like banging your head, you know, 
good trade, bad, good trade, trade that doesn't make money, good trade, that trade that doesn't make money. And we kind of stick to the language of follow through. We got follow through, we didn't get follow through. So bad and good really doesn't fit into the language that much. But Thursday comes and you're like, all right, I'm, it's Thursday, after, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon and not much happened yet this week. Uh, I'm down $500 for the week. I could have got hammered this week because the market kept going down. I kept putting good trades on. I managed. And then all of a sudden, a day like today happens and the market finds a bottom and you're only down a little bit for the week, but you traded well during the week, meaning you found good ideas. You had the right initial position size, chicken scratch back and forth, and, but you were still negative $500. Then one day comes, like maybe today, might be tomorrow, everything lines up. All the sector ETFs are green. The VIX is going down. The ticks are printing plus uh, 800, plus 1,000. And again, if you don't know what that means, watch the video that I did yesterday. Yesterday's live stream at noon. All of that stuff lines up. You manage the downside, and now you finish the week positive $3,000. Just throwing numbers out there, but those are real numbers. That's real trading. Don't get mad at yourself. Don't doubt yourself Monday through Thursday afternoon, Monday through Wednesday afternoon. Focus on if you flawlessly traded, if you did, and you had the right position size. It only takes one or two trades to be profitable for the day, the week, or the month. So if you keep this in mind, what does that make your number one job? Your number one job is recognizing the order flow and the quality of that order flow, which should dictate your position sizing. You always want to eventually get to full position size. Great conditions. You might get that on your initial entry. Less than maybe perfect conditions. You can go in with initial share size, but looking to get to uh, your initial position. So when you get to your full position size is basically what we're talking about. It's something to really think hard about. I also want to uh, introduce you to another book. And some of you might have seen this book. It's actually this one by, um, actually, you can't see that. Let me just pull it over here. So you can see it. Uh, this book right here, uh, Trade Your Way to Freedom by Van K. Tharp. So you know what? I'll actually, I'm going to drop this into the chat so everybody can see it. And you can take a look at that. I don't know what all that other stuff is in there, but that's the book, Trade Your Way to Freedom. Let me actually put that in there uh, right there. So he'll give you some really good ideas on position sizing. OK, so hopefully that uh, brought something home to you in a big way, because we've actually had a lot of members of our community who have listened to me talk about this and preach. I preach this every day in our community. The biggest thing, you know, the entries, the exits, the game plan, all that stuff is super important. The most important thing is understanding when you should have full position size. And that's something to write down. Again, I'm, I'm probably going to get a big post-it pad. Uh, a writer downer is understanding when to have full position size. Write that down. It is critical. Position sizing changes everything in your trading, but that means you need to have structure in place first to understand the order flow for the size of the position. Okay. Uh, let's see. Could you tell me what relation the VIX uh, with the stocks? Gunner, if you go to the video live stream that we did yesterday, we do a really detailed breakdown on that. All right. So I want to talk about this book now. I know I've mentioned this book quite a bit and it's not so much the title of the book, but it's it's the stuff that's over here, uh, right there. Low made first and the high made first. So if you get back into what I talked about before, and let me just pull that up on the screen again here, right there. I'm literally walking through the trading scenario of what I'm expecting to have happen today, what I want to see have happen today. And essentially the context of what we're talking about is when the market is trading well, when you see a good back and forth in the market and how this book is written again, I'll give you this. The author's name is uh, George Douglas Taylor. This book was written in the 1950s, if I'm not mistaken, 1950. And essentially the context of the book says that when price is flowing back and forth, generally speaking, you see the high or the low of the day made first off of the push off the opening price. So if the market closed here and the first push is higher, all things being normal, that ends up being the high of the day. If the market opens flat and the first push off the open is lower in a bullish environment, that typically leads to that first push being the low of the day. So if you combine the last four or five days of selling with a flat opening today and a push lower and then buyers step back in and that ends up being the low of the day, that's the scenario I'm talking about. So hopefully you took a screenshot of that because I outlined the scenario 
of looking for a flat opening and push lower. I outlined the position sizing, and then I took it a step further and talking about what I'm looking for in the market internals, specifically all of the sector ETFs and the VIX and the TIX, which are the two primary ones that I use. That's a lot, right? But you know what? You want to up level the game? You got to think a little bit more than what's the market doing right now. This is what we do in our community where I teach everybody to script out what you expect to have happen on the open. And again, I know I've mentioned this before, but it's kind of important. If you script out five stocks and you script out the market and you go into the day and you say, okay, here's exactly, I, I did clap again. Sorry about that. You clap uh, <laughs> and you map the market out and you say, I expect this to happen in the market. I expect this to happen in the top five stocks I'm watching today. This is what I'm expecting to have happen. Now, the biggest question we get all the time is how do I know what to expect? Well, the answer is order flow and reading the tape. How obvious is the order flow? How long has the order flow been obvious? What has the stock done over the last three to five days? And more importantly, where did it close yesterday? Sounds like a lot, right? Well, watch the replay because you can slow it down, pause it and take notes. But essentially what we're doing is basically saying if these strong stocks closed a certain way yesterday, what are the odds of it opening a certain way tomorrow? Okay. That's professional trading. But here's the thing. And I just outlined this whole scenario, right? It might happen on the open. It might not happen on the open. But here's the thing. I know exactly what I'm looking for. Raise your hand right now. If when the market opens, you say, I know exactly what I'm happen looking for. And when that happens, those are the stocks that I'm going to take advantage of. If I game plan five, I'll just keep the number five. If I game plan five stocks and two do exactly what I expected and the other three go completely in the other direction. I don't care about the other three. I care about the two that are doing exactly what I want. And those are the scenarios that you should trade with absolute conviction because you had the guts to learn how to read the tape and order flow and say, this is exactly what I expect. The market opens 935, 940, 945, 10 o'clock unfolds. Doesn't matter if you're day trading or swing trading. You know exactly what you expect. If what you scripted out is happening, you owe it to yourself to get in there and make the most you can in that situation with the right position sizing because you had the guts to script it out. Now, if you think that you don't have that inside of you, 100% you have it inside of you. You just need to understand the structure, okay? And I'm going to give you a little heads up on that structure. We actually have three more minutes before I have to head over into our other meeting. So we're going to talk about a couple of other things. First, uh, JKS actually had earnings this morning. Uh, it was up a little bit before, basically the same. It was actually up a little bit more before. Uh, SEC and GME. This is an interesting conversation. Uh, the SEC to publish uh, its report on GameStop. All right. I, I got to tell you, they're talking about new regulations because of what happened in GameStop. This is a bunch of BS, quite honestly. I don't... I, what are they going to do? People will short the market that happened to be hedge funds and a group of traders decided to buy the stock. That's not illegal. <laughs> it's not. You can't stop a group of people from having a conversation about buying it and they got caught on the other side because they're pushing the stock lower. This is going to be super interesting to see how this ends up unfolding. All right. Uh, but I want to get into this. We, we obviously talked about this a little bit, but I want well, actually we covered this already. I want to talk about Bitcoin. Aldo in our community um, called out something that I'm sure a lot of people know of, uh, but it's called uh, the Golden Cross. And the Golden Cross is essentially when the 50 period moving average on the daily time frame crosses above the 200. So if we go over to the chart of Bitcoin, uh, and we're going to actually go over to the Bitcoin uh, futures contract that goes out, uh, the continuous contract. So essentially what he's looking at right now is on this candlestick here. Uh, we have the 200 and we have the 50. Now it's just about to cross here. Aldo might be using the exponential, but essentially once it crosses down and comes back up, that generally leads to a uh, reliable bullish move back in that direction. So what does that mean? That means that we're going to start looking at Mara today, which has been beaten up a little bit. And you can see already before the market even opens, the stock's actually up um, $1.44 into pre-market, okay? So we covered a lot of stuff today. And again, my mission is to keep listening to your feedback, keep listening to what have been the biggest challenges to you. So on our community tab, if you scroll over on the Facebook channel, on the community tab, we posted a survey and we got some really good um, 
uh, responses. And the, the survey was actually questioning, what were your biggest challenges before you started trading? And then what were the actual challenges after you started trading? Sometimes, and matter of fact, more often than not, they're not the same. So you can see here on the screen right now, finding good ideas was one of the top responses. And I actually thought that was interesting because finding good ideas should be obvious. And I'm actually going to take you back up to now. You see the, the relative strength thing. So if you watched yesterday's live stream, again, if you didn't, you can see that right on the channel. It's one of the most recent videos. Um, we did relative strength intraday, and that was a big part of it. But what I'm going to walk you through now is probably the most simple way. And again, we want things to be simple, right? To find good ideas that you should at least consider without using any indicators. We actually had somebody yesterday ask a really good question. Actually, it was uh, by email on Monday night about why I don't use indicators such as RSI and stochastics and MACD and a bunch of those kind of things. They absolutely work. I, I just don't use them. And I, I, quite honestly, I don't know that many professional traders that do either. Most of us focus on price action and volume and that kind of stuff. Uh, let me see. The big money whose shorts got ruined are going to use their bought and paid for government to make sure that doesn't happen again. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, that's my point. That's exactly my point. It would be really interesting to see if it goes in that direction. But I think we can all agree that that's ridiculous. They got caught. <laughs> they got caught and... Too bad. <laughs> we all get caught in short squeezes as well, right? Anyway, good ideas. We're going to work our way over to the charts here. First thing you should do to keep it super simple, uh, and we're just going to use the SPY as an example, and I'm going to remove the moving averages uh, just to make this as clutter-free as possible. Always start out on the monthly chart. So what are we looking for on the monthly chart to determine what we should be looking at right now in a very obvious way? The color of the candlestick. Don't make it any more complicated. The color of the monthly candlestick indicates right now that sellers are in charge of this security right now for September. And you can see how long the bulls are in charge. But right now, at this moment, sellers are in charge. Then go to the weekly chart. From the Monday opening price, who is in charge? Well, right now, sellers are in charge. Again, Monday and Tuesday heading into Wednesday. What does that mean? That means that we also need to put a line in the sand that tells us when this changes. So if we're looking at our weekly chart, right now that is the control for the week. So red monthly and a red weekly, okay? Now you go down to the daily chart and we start to look for opportunities. This is actually the Monday open. Let me draw that in there a little bit more specifically. And right now it's red on the daily chart, okay? That's how you find good ideas in the fastest way possible. What we just looked at, and I know it's going through your mind right now. No, it can't be that easy, okay? We're talking about short-term trading. I'm not talking about longer-term investing. I'm not talking about position trading. I'm not even talking about swing trading right now. I'm just talking about how do you get your bias and going back to the beginning of what we talked about today to establish your position size. The longer-term bull market is clearly in place right now. However, starting September, the month, the week, and the last couple of days have been selling. So that means you need to reduce your position sizing. Now, remember what I just said before about scripting the open. You need now to script the scenario that tells you that the current conditions are back in the direction of the longer term conditions. So what does that mean about trading right now? It means you either should be in cash if it doesn't make sense, or you should be trading with reduced position sizing until that picture of finding good ideas clears itself up. Two more things, exits. It was interesting that stop losses were not a big part of the survey. And by the way, if you want to take the survey so that we can answer your questions as well, it's click over to the community tab here on, on, um, on, uh, on, on our YouTube channel. Stop losses weren't a big deal, but what was a big part of the big deal for the responses that we get were the mindset of taking stop losses, which too many people don't take them, which boggles my mind. And hopefully that you – are learning this from me through these calls that losses are not a big deal. Again, write this down. Losses are a big business expense. It's when you don't have the mindset to exit at the right time that reasonable losses become these giant losses. And that's where you don't feel like you can do what you want to do. You, you, don't, you almost don't feel like you're a trader. You don't feel like it's for you when it's not really the market. It's not the structure of the market. It's you not taking reasonable losses because you let your ego and your mind start playing games with you. And it's, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. Well, let me tell you something. How many people have blown their stop loss in the last 
five to seven days saying, I don't need a stop loss. The market always comes back. And now what was a $500 loss or a thousand or 1500 or 2000. And now you're staring at a loss that's four times bigger than you plan to prior to the trade. And now you're hoping the market comes back and God forbid you're thinking about averaging down into a losing position, which wipes out trading accounts. So it was fascinating and super insightful for me that finding good ideas and having the structure, like we talked about scripting out, if this happens, then I'm doing this, that exits and the mindset to take those exits is a big challenge as well. So I talk about it all the time in our private trainings that you could eliminate the, the negative energy that trading losses give you and forever in a heartbeat right now, just by admitting that a trading loss is a business expense, it's the cost of doing business to run your trading business, no different than having employees or buying inventory. So as of right now, if you get nothing else out of today's call, I hope you got a lot out of today's call, but if that's the only thing you get out of today's call, trading losses are a business expense. So the mindset for exiting trades has to be, I'm spending money to make money. Some of it is inventory that I have to spend that money for the other side. Some of it is a sunk cost, which is I got to pay the electric bill. I got to pay my employees. I got to buy the baloney to put on the shelf. Not all of the money you spend is going to have a direct ROI but you still need to spend that money to run your business. So those trading losses that don't follow through, those are the ones that are the foundation of the expenses that you have to spend to find out which of those are gonna produce the ROI, all right? We have to actually call it a meeting right now. I have to head over to our game plan meeting, which starts in about 20 minutes. Uh, again, just a quick reminder, click the link in the description if you wanna to attend tonight's um, webinar for futures trading. If you want to learn the New York method and how we do everything, also click down in the description. Uh, and if you could please do me a favor, I'd really appreciate it. Click down and hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me because it'll let me know that I'm helping you today. So I just want you to know how grateful I am that you're here with me today. I hope every day we're bringing massive value to you and stuff that you could use right away. So have an awesome day, everybody. I appreciate it. Have a profitable day. Hopefully you took some screenshots there and uh, you got a good idea of the game plan that we're looking for today. So have an awesome day, everybody. I appreciate it. Take care now.